Hello, Business 340. This is Dr. Ashbaugh, one of the three instructors for the course. Last time I did double exponential smoothing forecasting with you, which I talked about qualitative and quantitative forecasting methods. And because double exponential smoothing requires data, it's a quantitative forecasting method. But it's only one type. So I want to show you a different type. So I've got a little lecture in here. So there are two main categories of quantitative forecasting methods. One's called time series and the other's called causal. And double exponential smoothing is a, is a time series forecasting because I'm going to use the value of the last period's forecast as an input to calculating the forecast for the next period. Those are time series. There's another type of forecasting that's quantitative that uses data. And that's what we're going to do today. It's called causal. Causal methods use, use something other than time to predict the future level of a variable. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to look for something that other than time to predict. For a good example of a causal forecast is diaper sales. So we can just use last period's diaper sales to predict next um, period's diaper sales, or we can use the number of live births in an area to try to predict diaper sales. Because the more babies that are born, that should mean the demand for our product is going to be higher. Another um, good example of a causal forecast is using um, housing starts to predict appliance sales because every new house needs to have a refrigerator, a range, um, doesn't need it, but most houses get dishwashers and microwaves. So if I'm in the appliance business, I'll wash your dryers. If I'm in the appliance business, I'm going to look at housing starts as a good predictor for sales. And you know, there's other things I can add into it. You know, remodel permits might have something to do with it. Again, there'll be a failure rate for appliances that I can add in there. But the main thing is, trying to predict just last period's demand to pick next periods might not be very good. If there was a lot of housing starts, maybe we had a very cold winter and a lot of housing did not, or a lot of construction didn't happen, and then boom, we've got a lot of houses ready to go in the next period. We're using the winter to predict the spring demand is going to be terrible. So if we know what housing is going to do, we can predict our appliance sales better. All right, so our tool for this is for causal forecasting is regression, and we can use just regular single regression, use one variable to predict the level of a different variable, or we can use a bunch of different variables to predict the level of a variable. So in this case, we're going to try to model house prices, and we have house prices, so we're going to try to predict house prices. So this is going to be our Y. And we're going to have a bunch of predictor variables. These are going to be our x's, x1, x2, x3, x4. So we're going to see if the size in terms of square footage has anything to do with the price of a house. If the garage size, whether it has no garage, one car, two car, three car, if that has something to do with house price. If the driveway length has something to do with house price. Or if the year that it was made has something to do with house prices. Now. For those that are real estate savvy can look in here and say, yeah, you know, great, but the three most important things for real estate is location, location, location. None of these are location. And for this model to make any sense, we'd have to narrow the geography down. Because, you know, Raleigh market, you know, these prices might be useful for the Raleigh market a few years back. But if I were to take these same prices and square footage into my hometown in Southern California on the beach, uh, they wouldn't even come close. You'd have to add a million dollars to each of these, and you're not even coming close to what the real estate values are out there. Um, New York City also, you know, having um, you know a, a 2,400 square foot place in in Manhattan will cost you a lot more than what you see here. So we know that maybe we could do this on a regional basis and the reason why we do this is we want to create a model so we can price our house accordingly. So if you ever sell a house one of the hardest things to do is to price it. 
If you price it too low and you accept early offers, you might not get as much out of the house as it's worth. So you're leaving money on the table. If you price it too high, people aren't going to buy it. It will sit on the market longer. You'll be more stressed out if there's another house you're trying to move into. It causes a lot of aggregation or aggravation, sorry. So you don't want to underprice or overprice. So if we can have a model that will predict, wonderful. That's a good way to go. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to see if these variables can predict the price of the house. Again, it's a model. Is it going to be 100% accurate? No. I mean, this doesn't tell us is one of these houses on a lake. It doesn't tell us is one of these on, on like Glenwood South. Uh, we don't know where these houses are. And again, location does have a huge impact in house prices. But we're going to see what we can get out of this model. Now, to do multiple regression on Excel, you need to add something. And if we look at our data, I have data analysis. Now, most of you guys have solver for our optimization models, right? So we did optimization. We did solver. Many don't have data analysis. To get data analysis, you get it the same way. And I don't know why Excel chooses to do this, but we have to go to options and then add-ins, Excel add-ins go, and then we see our solver that's checked and we also want to check our analysis tool pack. Okay, if the analysis tool pack is checked, when you go to data, you will find data analysis. If we go to data analysis, we get a pop-up box that has all sorts of fun statistical tools. All right, we can see ANOVA analysis of variance. We can look at F tests. We can look at T tests. We can look at Z tests. Well, what we're interested right now is in terms of regression. So I'm going to click regression and we'll get a new pop-up. So it asks me to input the Y range. So what are we trying to predict? We're trying to predict price. What are we going to use to predict? We're going to use, oops, sorry about that. I didn't check the next piece left, so let me do it. I'm going to use everything else to predict my price. Now, because I included the first row, I need to put labels so we don't try to do math on text. And I'm going to have it go on a new worksheet. So let's let her rip. And here's my new worksheet. I'll blow it up for you so you can see it a little better. There's a lot in here. Okay. There are some fun stuff. Now, some of you have taken statistics recently and know what this stuff is. Some people... Um, purposely forgot their statistics. Um, I'll go into what some of these key places mean in here. So R squared. R squared is a number between 0 and 1. The higher the R squared, the more that the data fits our model. What R squared means, it's a goodness of fit. So it means that 96% of the variability in the model can be explained by the model. Or 96% of the Variability can be explained by our model. All right. Now, below it's adjusted R squared, and it's a different number. What's the deal with adjusted R squared? Well, it turns out R squared, if you add variables that don't actually add value to your model, the R squared won't go down. Adjusted R squared will. So when you see a divergence between R squared and adjusted R squared, it means you've got some variables that aren't adding to your model. So we've got some variables in here that don't really matter much. So what we need to find out is, okay, which ones are these? And the best way to do it is to look at the p-value. The p-value is the percent chance the null hypothesis is actually true. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, if the null hypothesis is true, well, then this variable doesn't really belong as part of the model. So if we look at it, well intercept, intercept doesn't matter so much. But if we look at, at some things, well garage size looks like it is very important because it's only a 0.36% chance that garage size is not important. The garage size, I mean the null hypothesis percent chance is very very low. Not impossible, but it's very very low. If we look at driveway length, this is awful. 0 0.80, that means there's an 80% chance that the driveway length has nothing to do with the price of the house. 
And if we look at our coefficients, actually the driveway length is bad for your house. When you think a long driveway length, you think of a stately mansion, and that should make the price go up. Well, based on the data we have, a longer driveway makes the price go down slightly. And why is that? Well, maybe those houses with longer driveways are farther away from the city centers or from the jobs, in which case those extra commuting times will mean your house might not go for as much money. All right, so having an 80% chance that this variable doesn't really belong in the model means, you know what, maybe I should get rid of it and see if I get a better model without it. Again, driveway size or length, that doesn't matter. Garage size, yeah, that really does matter. Year, well, that doesn't look like it matters, but let's just take one variable out at a time. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to copy these variables over. Oops. All right, and then I'm going to get rid of driveway. And I'm going to try to do the multiple regression again. So I'll go back to data, data analysis, regression, I still want the same, I'm still predicting price, but I'm going to predict it with less variables. I'm going to predict it with these guys instead. All right, still have the labels, still have the output range, say okie dokie, and boom, I've got my next multiple regression. That was easy, oops too much. All right, so what happened here? My R squared went down. It was 96, and now it's less than 96, barely, but it's still less. So we had a little bit of, of decrease in my R squared amount, but my adjusted R squared went up, which when the adjusted R squared goes up, it means, hey, you likely took away a variable that didn't add value to your model. Okay, and if we look at our p-values, again, size, the percent chance that it was null went down. Garage size is now really, really important. And we look at the year that the house was made, and that's not important at all. Okay, well, let's do this again. Let's take out the year this time. So I'll run regression again. Okay, except this time I'm going to do just the size and garage size. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. And I'll make it bigger for you. And we see that our R squared went down just slightly, but our adjusted R squared went up even more. So these numbers are converging. So if we look at our p-values, we see that garage size still is very, very important, and size is less important. So there's a 27 percent chance that size doesn't have anything to do with the housing price, which means, you know, over a 73 percent chance that it does, or not over, about 73 percent chance it does. Now, I happen to know people like bigger houses more than smaller houses, but again, the housing size isn't as important as where is it. A very small house in Manhattan will be worth a lot more than a very large house in the middle of nowhere in Iowa. Um, likewise, you know, my house in Raleigh is much bigger than my brother's in, in California, except for his and my house are worth about the same on paper. So size does matter, but location probably matters much more. All right, and in business, we don't need the p-values to be, I mean, you always see the p-value needs to be under 5% or under 10%, your thresholds. Um, those are for scientific studies. For business, we just need to be right more than we're wrong. And 27% chance of null hypothesis, which means about 73% chance it is important. I'll take those odds. All right. 
So business isn't the same as a pharmaceutical study. We're saying, how do we make money off of it? And saying, okay, the size is, you know, 73% chance that it is important. Well, we'll take that. All right, so we have a model that's smaller. We have adjusted R squared that's moved up and converged with our R squared. And we find that our model fits pretty well. Okay, this is what we do with our with our regression. Now, I did a pretty easy problem. You're going to do a harder problem. Your harder problem is this real estate table. And in this real estate table, we have a lot more variables. All right, we still have selling price, so we're going to try to predict price. But now we're going to include, okay, how many crimes are in the neighborhood? How many homicides are in the neighborhood? What's the year it was sold? Medical facilities, how many are there nearby? Are libraries nearby? How many days on the market is it? What's the age of home? Bedrooms, bathrooms, garage, square footage. There's a lot more data, and some of these may be more important than others. And I've already run the regression on it because there's actually 500 um, data points on here. And this is what we get. Now your job is to take this and, and move it forward in terms of removing data items that, that don't really matter. Notice our R squared isn't as high as it was for, for the presentation I did. Um, adjusted R squared is close to R squared, so that means that there's not a lot of, of variables that aren't important here. And if we look at our p-values, you know, to the negative 100, yeah, crimes really matter. And if there's crimes in your neighborhood, it's going to decrease the value of your house. Homicides are really important. A homicide in your neighborhood can bring down the price of your house, you know, in this case, on average, by almost $30,000. That is a big deal. Some of these aren't as important. If you look at the date the year was sold, I mean, the date sold year, there's about a 58% chance that it doesn't matter for the model. Okay, so if I'm looking at where to start my narrowing down of, of variables, this would probably be the first one I would hit. Um, just, you know, houses that don't turn over aren't necessarily less valuable. It could be that, um, you know, an, an older house that single owner is worth more because it's less likely to have had damage to it, less likely to have had renters at some point in time. So anyway, this is your next assignment to do that won't be graded, but you do turn it in um, to get the gamification points. But your job is to run multiple regression and see which variables you can take out of the model that actually reduce the model's effectiveness. So hopefully you learned a little bit about multiple regression in terms of forecasting and causal forecasting. Again, this is a big piece of big data. If big data can predict exactly what something should cost or exactly what demand is for some item based on other factors, that is a huge boost to profitability. So anyway, Good luck with your portion of the assignment. I hope I've given you a good head start. And um, I hope everyone's staying safe in um, our shutdown here at the university. So take care and good luck with this assignment.